We appreciate you coming along today. Before your near-death encounter, could you kindly inform us about your background? Definitely. Working in the Seattle area, more especially for King County, in the Juvenile Court's Probation Division, I was a supervisor. I enjoyed working with teenagers and totally loved my career. I used to say constantly that I would do it till the day I passed away. Little did I realize how prophetic those remarks would turn out. That's really fascinating. What then caused your almost fatal experience? That all began on May 5th, 2006. I finally developed a kidney stone lodged on the correct side. Having kidney stones passed, I knew the symptoms right away. How did you first handle things? Expecting it to pass like it had in other instances. I first thought I could wait it out or push through the agony. Nevertheless, this was different. The suffering persisted rather than vanished. What then was your next action? I recall visiting an emergency room. I really was quite laid back about it. Knowing the script from my past experiences, I just strolled in and stated, I have a kidney stone, it's over here. The agony would go away if they would take me to a room and provide morphine. Did the hospital's operation follow expectations? Not precisely. They prescribed medications for my kidney illness they also found I had. The physicians agreed to arrange an operation for the following day and keep me overnight. The operation turned out? The operation itself proceeded without any hiccups. They split the stones as intended. At the time, though, we were unaware that I was among those for whom the drugs they prescribed failed to properly fight the infection I carried. That sounds worrying. What happened thus? The infection, the poison, basically entered my bloodstream when they split the stones. I become septic, and my body began to fail everywhere. Not limited to my lungs and heart, but everything. That had to be quite horrible. What details of that moment come to you? The fact that, upon realizing I was dying, I felt so little terror caught me by surprise. Being a born-again Christian, I understood that death brings one to heaven. So all I could think when I realized what was occurring was, I'm going home. Could you then outline what happened next? The hospital records indicate that I spent roughly one hour and 45 minutes clinically dead. My experience of that period was somewhat different, though. I recall leaving my body and firing across the hospital floor, even into the azure sky and outer space. It happened quite quickly. You would say, how quickly? Though it's difficult to explain, I usually picture a Bible chapter stating, To be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. That's just how it felt. I accelerated faster than anyone could blink their eye. I was in heaven already when the top eyelid touched the bottom one. That is interesting. As you were en route, what did you notice? I recall seeing what some people define as a light at the end of a tunnel as I was entering that sphere. To me, though, it more resembled a window. Though that's the best way I could characterize it. I'm not suggesting it was a window. At this window, what happened? Oh yeah, everything was good as I passed that window. Nothing illegal. It was just pure peace. Nothing would irritate you. Nothing would set off your nerves. In such moment, how did you feel? More than anything else, what caught me was that I fit. Until I went through this, I had no idea how out of place I had felt before. I felt I belonged in heaven when I arrived there. Heaven's everything was beckoning me. Saying everything begs questions about what you intend. I mean all, not simply God Almighty or Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit. I sensed it by looking about me. Everything in heaven was literally delighted I was there. There were trees. I felt welcome from the ground up. I studied flowers. They appeared to greet me. Everything there was, so happy I had shown up. That sounds to be quite deep. At that point, what was your main goal? More than anything else, I wanted to see Jesus Christ, you know, I didn't even know I had this longing until I got there. I wanted to personally meet him. To me, that was really vital. I began to see that heaven is someone you want to be with, not only a place you wish to visit. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation. It is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Could you map your search for Jesus? I realized Jesus Christ was through those trees as I was walking across a forest. There were many of trees in front of me. I recall thinking I had to see where he was by walking among those trees. The trees opened before me as I was headed forward. 
That is astonishing. How did that feel? I sensed the trees on both sides of me were saying, He's going to see the king. He's going to see the king. He's going to see the king. And then, what occurred? I saw Jesus when I emerged into this open area, a clearing. He was staring at a group of angels and what I refer to as redeemed humans. Folks who had been on earth and had traveled to heaven, he was more to the left of me. When you met Jesus, how did you feel? When I approached him, the first thing I did was not get up. I remember stepping up to him. I came so near to him, then I down on my hands and knees and looked at his feet. Could you sum up what you observed? Before him, he was still confronting the sea of people, millions of them, billions truly. Not truly his face at that point, I was staring at the side of his feet and could only elevate my head to view part of his legs. Right then, what were you thinking or feeling? I might say simply, you did this for me. Everything inside of me, everything in me at that moment knew that only because of what Jesus Christ had done, I was in heaven. Having him do it for me made me rather appreciative. How did you show thanks? Just say thank you, thank you, thank you, over and over again, next thing I could do. I felt great thanks. At that instant, what insight dawned upon you, though mentally? I understood he had done it for everyone. Personally, I took it as so personal that he built all of heaven only for me. I stopped and thought, the only reason I'm here is because of what he had done. Although I wouldn't want to say I was selfish since I wasn't, that's what I thought he had done, just for me. That is a strong emotional response. What next action did you take? I then set out researching his body. I followed his feet to his ankles. His ankles adored me. I met his calves. They loved me. I could see his loving knees. Everything I looked at about him adored me. His hands were dear to me. And when you finally got to his face? This is one of the things that still gets me today when I came to his face and he stared at me. He looked at me like I had never ever defied him in my whole life. That truly caught my attention. That has to have been taxing. What did that look like? It got me to thinking about how he forgives you, then forgets it. I have read in the Bible, in the 8th chapter of Hebrews and also the 10th, that God forgives you and forgets. I felt that from Jesus. I understood that I would never die. I was an everlasting existence. Me, the actual person living inside this body, will never die. My body died. One has a great awareness of this. What followed this meeting? It was just like that. That's how he describes it after that interaction with him. And him uploading certain things inside of me. I call it downloading like a computer. He looks at me and says, no, it's not your time. Go back. About being advised to go back, what was your reaction? I found that rather reasonable. I recall not following the forest to return to where I arrived into heaven. I passed across the woodland. It felt as though I were flying above it. Could you characterize that flying experience? As we conceive of flying, there isn't truly flying here. I want to be ten feet above the surface there, you may say literally, and you are there. If you read your Bible, the greatest way I could explain it to you is as like what Jesus walked upon water. There is no anxiety, hence you can go as high as you desire. That sounds fantastic. When you arrived at the location you had chosen, it was like I knew the next step I took. I would be out of that realm when I arrived to the area I was going to exit out. And it wasn't like there was a door there that opened up and you went out. I sensed my body wasn't ready as I stood there for a bit. That wasn't ready. I was so happy it wasn't ready. What then did you do? Turning back, I said yes and realized Jesus was on the other side of the forest. The forest was before me. But I felt like I could literally go to the left of the forest. And while I'm headed there, oh man, all of creation is so joyful. Could you go over what you observed? Mountains were what I saw, and they were very lovely. They move like ocean waves. They could move, and as they were, it appeared as though ocean waves were passing by. But in fact, they were mountains passing. To be honest with you, I believed I was going to stay, so this is absolutely fantastic and I am enjoying it. That sounds unbelievable. You then did? I came back to Jesus knowing I had to return to him, this time around the other side of him for whatever reason. I stepped behind him and then returned to the same posture I used the first time. I bent down once again before him. Then he spoke to me a little more on matters there. Could you sum up your experience throughout this contact? What saw or felt? 
I recall the light that was emanating from him. I didn't mention this the first time. But it was wrapping itself around me and was really brilliant. That sounds really lovely. What followed from this second meeting? Following that, he comes back to see me. He once more stares down at me with these exquisite loving eyes. Again, he tells me, no, it's not your time. Go back. How did you answer this time? The second time, oh man, I walk over the woods once more. I got to the edge of where I came in at. And it looked like I walk one more step and I'm out. I get ready to leave, and all of a sudden, once more, I realize my body is not ready. I am thinking, yes, I am staying. So you have another opportunity to explore? Indeed, this time I travel to the right of that woodland instead of the left of me and have had rather amazing experiences. That side looked to be more of the liquids, that of water, the oceans, the rivers. Though I'm not certain why they were over on that side, they were. Could you characterize what you observed on that side? They were more blue, but that blue like we would describe as the hues there are more vivid than one could conceive. I travel, I see saints, I go through various experiences. On that side I have observed many quite varied animals. Heaven's animal count is exceedingly high. That's really interesting. Following this research, what happened? Then I returned straight back to Jesus. Oh man, they were constantly there. Why I didn't recognize them is unknown. Once more, I find myself staring at Jesus' feet from the same location I visited previously. Then I gaze up and find my family on the other side of him. Could you perhaps elaborate on seeing your family? My grandmother Mary is standing out front right now. She is standing front over here in a group on this side. Then behind her were more relatives and thereafter relatives. It was generation after generation of all people who had a relationship with Jesus Christ. And the Father coming to welcome me in. That has to have been emotional, having seen them before in your experience. I now know they were there the first time I was with Jesus. I knew they were there the second time I was with Jesus. I paid almost all of my attention to Jesus. I hardly paid any to them. This time, though, for some reason I concentrated on Jesus first, then on them. How would you characterize their looks? There is no time, hence it is difficult to define someone in heaven. I tell folks they were shining. They were pure delight with a great smile. Later on, I remarked to myself, Wow, I got to see my entire family in heaven smiling. And I thought, I've never seen that on the planet. And loving each other so very much, that has great beauty. Does this encounter alter your conception of family in heaven? Family was like that in heaven, not as I knew of. That would be the way it is. I considered us all the family of God and that we would see each other. But you people... I came to see that family is really significant to God. Regarding who you saw there, were any shocks? There were those present that I never would have imagined. Since they fell short of my expectations, I reasoned they did not enter heaven. They did not meet my criterion. They met God's. From what your knowledge, what is God's criteria? God's standards let Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior. God is demanding these standards. What then followed this encounter with your family? Here it is, you folks. My family comes to welcome Jesus. He downloads a lot of material in me, and I get to see what it's like to be in heaven and all of heaven gathering together and praising and adoring God. After everything, though, Jesus suddenly looks at me once more and orders, No, it is not your time. Go back. How did you interpret this directive? Like a soldier, I felt all of creation that was in front of me stepped aside and said, He's not talking about me. He's talking about you. I used to fly for the Air Force. That kind of thing I felt as I went, Yes, sir! Then I prepared to depart. That's what I sensed him saying, I need you there more than I need you here. Though he didn't speak those words. That's exactly what I was experiencing. At this moment, did anyone else talk to you? Indeed, my grandma Mary was present. She looks at me while I am saying this and says, Bring as many of us back with you as you can. She is referring to my whole family here on Earth. That's a striking message. And then what did you do? I bent before Jesus like this, crossed those trees once more, arrived at what I would define as the brink of heaven, stepped, and then I was out and returned to this world. About going back, what was your attitude? And I thought of a baby wailing quite intensely. I recall hanging over my bed in which the body was in the hospital room. They had started putting stuff away and had really stopped working on me. The doctor even said at the time he was signing the death certificate. 
Did you find any sense of how our earthly relationships either remain or evolve in heaven? Surely I did. I connected strongly with my family members I saw in paradise and recognized them. Still, it was unlike our terrestrial connections. Our love for one another was pure and flawless, free from any of the tensions or misinterpretation we could have had on earth. Through their relationship with God, everyone appeared to be relating to one another. You said initially you did not want to return. Could you perhaps elaborate on your return to your body? I felt driven once Jesus informed me for the third time that it was not my time and I had to return. I knew I had a purpose. My Grandma Mary had instructed me to bring as many people back with me as I could. I felt when I departed paradise as if I were once more going quite swiftly, exactly as upon my arrival. My body lay there in the hospital room when I returned. The medical crew was putting things away and had ceased tending to me. The doctor even was signing my death certificate. For a time I hovered over my body, then turned over and returned into it. What happened when you came back into your body? The cardiac monitor began to signal after I returned inside my body. Startled, the medical professionals hurried back to keep working on me. They got me breathing once more after intubation. That was a far cry from the peace and happiness. I had just felt in heaven. Following this event, how did you feel physically? On the physical level, I was rather feeble. My body has traveled a lot. My recovery took time as I had been clinically dead for about one hour and 45 minutes. Emotionally and spiritually, though, I felt rejuvenated and guided. How have this event shaped your life going ahead? It has fundamentally altered everything. Regarding life, death, and eternity, I see things from another angle. I live every day knowing that every moment counts since our time on earth is limited relative to eternity. Loving others and spreading God's love message with as many people as I can occupy my more concentrated attention. Though I'm more grateful for the gift of life and the direction God has for me here, I no longer fear death. You noted now live with more purpose. Could you say more about that? Certainly. Having experienced paradise and getting that message from my grandmother to bring as many as us back with you as you can, I feel a great need to tell my story and enable others to see the reality of heaven and God's love. I try to live every day knowing that our choices here have lifetime effects. Has your near-death experience changed your social contacts? Really great. Like I experienced his love for me, each person now seems to be someone much loved by God. It has made me more empathetic, patient, and ready to share with others the love I discovered in heaven. Knowing how vital they are, not just here but in eternity, I also treasure my family relationships more than ever. You spoke of witnessing animals in paradise. Could you perhaps elaborate on that? Indeed, the number of creatures I observed in heaven shocked me. They appeared to have a particular place there, yet they were everywhere. I observed species we know of on earth as well as ones I would never have come across. All seemed to be in perfect harmony with one another and with everything around them. God truly stresses for all of his creation, not only for humans. That's incredible. You interacted with any one of these animals? Not exactly, no. I hardly ever interacted with the animals. I was so preoccupied with Jesus and later with my family, like everything else in heaven. Though I could sense their delight and happiness, they looked to be in their own unique form complimenting God. You have discussed paradise's beauty. Could you go into further depth about it? It's difficult as worldly language does not properly reflect it. More vivid than anything we have here were the hues. Though it was everywhere, the light was gentle and pleasant. Everything appeared to be alive in a difficult-to-articulate manner. The trees, the flowers, and what looked to be inanimate items all seemed to have a life of their own. And everything fit perfectly harmonically. No flaw or deterioration existed. It was beauty outside my wildest dreams. You said Jesus downloaded material into you. Could you clarify your meaning with that? Though it's difficult to explain. I felt as though I knew nothing at all before then. He was delivering knowledge straight into my mind or soul, not as though he was speaking to me in words. Things about God, about heaven, about life that I had never really understood before came together. Some of this knowledge disappeared when I went back to my body, but some of it lingered with me. Could you offer any particular observations from this download? Deeper knowledge of God's love was among the main things. Though I knew what it meant for God to love us, what I discovered was far more profound. 
I also developed understanding of the nature of eternity, the significance of our decisions on earth, and the reality of spiritual warfare. Some things, though, are ideas our earthly brains struggle to grasp and cannot even express. You spoke of spiritual warfare. Could you explain that further? Indeed, I started to see the truth of spiritual forces, both good and bad, that are operating in our planet. I came to see that we usually ignore the spiritual component of many of our problems and difficulties. Has your experience impacted how you see death? This has made me more deliberate about prayer and about wearing what the Bible calls the full armor of God. Definitely, I no longer have any overall fear of death, though it's not the end. I know it's a change to something far more wonderful than we could even dream of. That doesn't mean I'm rushing to die. I want to fulfill God's will as I think He has one for me here. But when my time comes, I eagerly await going back to heaven. Do you now view time differently? Undoubtedly. Time in heaven did not exist in the manner we know now. Everything was perpetual present. It helps me to see, in the big picture of things, how fleeting our problems and tribulations on earth are. Knowing that every minute is valuable and has lifetime relevance has helped me also become more conscious of how I use my time here. You said you observed folks in heaven you would not have expected to find. How has this changed your conception of atonement? It lessens my judgment greatly. I came to see that God's grace and pity are considerably more than we usually credit Him with. It's about accepting Jesus and His sacrifice, not about living by guidelines or striving perfection. I now approach presuming I know someone's spiritual state much more cautiously. Only God understands a person's heart, really. I'm sorry about the disturbance. You're correct. I'm not done. Let me carry on the conversation. You said lately you were living with more direction. Could you clarify that? Absolutely. Having experienced paradise and getting that message from my grandmother to bring as many as us back with you as you can, I feel a great need to tell my story and enable others to see the reality of heaven and God's love. I try to live every day knowing that our choices here have lifetime effects. Has your near-death experience changed your social contacts? Really great. Like I experienced His love for me, each person now seems to be someone much loved by God. It has made me more empathetic, patient, and ready to share with others the love I discovered in heaven. Knowing how vital they are not just here but in eternity, I also treasure my family relationships more than ever. You spoke of witnessing animals in paradise. Could you perhaps elaborate on that? Indeed, the number of creatures I observed in heaven shocked me. They appeared to have a particular place there, yet they were everywhere. I observed species we know of on earth as well as ones I would never have come across. All seem to be in perfect harmony with one another and with everything around them. God truly stresses for all of His creation, not only for humans. That's incredible. You interacted with any one of these animals? Not straightforwardly, no. I did not really interact with the animals. I was so preoccupied with Jesus and later with my family. Still, I could feel their happiness and calm same as everything else in heaven. They seem to be in their own unique manner thanking God. You have discussed heaven's splendor. Could you go into further depth about it? It's difficult as worldly language hardly does it justice. The hues were more vivid than anything we have here. Though it was everywhere, the light was not severe. It was pleasant and inviting. Everything seemed to be alive in a difficult-to-define sense. The trees, the flowers, and what looked to be inanimate items all seemed to have a life of their own. And everything had perfect harmony. Neither degradation nor flaw existed. It was beauty above my wildest dreams. Jesus downloaded material into you, you said. Could you clarify your meaning with that? Though it's difficult to explain, I felt as though I knew nothing at all before then. He was delivering knowledge straight into my mind or soul, not as though he was speaking to me in words. I had never before grasped concepts about God, about heaven, about existence. When I got back to my body, some of this knowledge vanished, but some stuck with me. From this download, could you offer any particular special insights? A closer knowledge of God's love was among the main things. Though I knew what it meant for God to love us, what I discovered was far more profound. I also developed understanding of the essence of eternity, the relevance of our decisions on earth, and the reality of spiritual warfare. Some things, nevertheless, 
our ideas our earthly brains find difficult to grasp and cannot even express. You spoke of spiritual conflict. Could you perhaps clarify that? Indeed, I started to pay closer attention to the reality of spiritual powers, both positive and negative, that shape our planet. I came to see that we sometimes ignore the spiritual component of many of our difficulties and issues. This has made me more deliberate about prayer and about donning what the Bible describes as the full armor of God. Has your perspective of dying evolved from experience? Absolutely. I no longer have any overall fear of death, though it's not the end. I know it's a change to something far more wonderful than we could possibly picture. I don't mean I'm rushing to die. I think God has a mission for me here. And I want to carry out that. When my time comes, though, I am excited to... Has your view of time changed? Definitely. Time in heaven did not exist as it does here. Everything was present, always eternal. It helps me to see, in the big picture of things, how fleeting our problems and hardships are here on earth. Knowing that every minute is valuable and has lifetime relevance has also helped me to become more conscious of how I use my time here. You stated seeing people in heaven you would not have expected to see. How has this changed your conception of atonement? It lessens my judgment greatly. I came to see that God's grace and pity are considerably more than we usually credit Him with. It's about accepting Jesus and His sacrifice, not about trying to be perfect or follow a set of guidelines. I now approach presuming I know someone's spiritual state much more cautiously. God alone knows a person's heart, really. Has your experience changed your praying life? Indeed. To me, prayer has grown to be far more real and necessary, having personally seen God so closely in heaven. I now approach prayer with a more actual communication with a loving Father. In my prayers, I am more honest, more open, and more expecting. You said that everything in paradise embraced you. Could you characterize that emotion more precisely? It was the most whole sense of belonging I had ever had. Often on earth we battle emotions of not fitting in or not being good enough. Those emotions hardly existed in heaven. From the grass underfoot to the air surrounding me, everything appeared to be saying, You belong here. We're so glad you've come. It was an overpowering sense of acceptance and affection. Has this encounter shaped your perspective on your body? It has indeed. I came to see that although our physical bodies are vital, they are only transient receptacles for our everlasting souls. I sensed more me in heaven than I have in my corporeal body. It has shifted my priorities from physical attractiveness to spiritual development. Colors in heaven were more vivid, you said. Could you clarify that further? We lack terminology for the hues I observed, so it's difficult. Imagine the most vivid blue you have ever seen. The colors in heaven make that seem pallid in contrast. And there were hues I had never seen before, ones absent from our terrestrial range. Everything seemed to radiate from within using these amazing hues. Did you have any idea of the extent or scale of heaven? Heaven seemed to be both infinite and personal at once. It was near and personal when I was with Jesus or my family. But I also sensed great limitless beauty radiating in every direction. Heaven seemed as big as it needed to be to house everyone and everything in perfect harmony. You spoke about the trees separating for you. Have you come across any more instances of nature acting differently than it does on earth? Indeed, it is difficult to articulate how alive and sensitive everything in paradise felt. The mountains moved like waves, the light seemed to have a life of its own wrapping about me. Even what we might consider inanimate objects here seemed to have a type of consciousness there, all of which pointed towards worshipping God. Did you find any resonance in the experiences of others in heaven? Though I was preoccupied with my own experience, I felt as though everyone else present was feeling the same degree of love, peace, and delight as I was. Though all were joined in praise and adoration for God, it seemed as though everyone was having their own perfect experience. You said you wanted not to return. How did you come to be ready for your return to earth? Initially, it was challenging. Heaven is so lovely and flawless that part of me wanted not to leave. Still, I felt that God had a reason for bringing me back, and that helped me to find comfort with going back. My life now serves as a mission to convey what I have gone through and assist others in getting ready for eternity. Interviewer How has your perspective of worship changed with experience? For me, worship now has a whole different connotations. 
In heaven, worship was an ongoing condition of being, rather than only something you perform. Not out of necessity, but rather out of genuine delight and love, everything and everyone was constantly praising God. It has given me fresh depth and zest for approaching worship on earth. When you were in heaven, did you know about events happening on earth? No, I hadn't. I had no knowledge of what was happening with my body or on earth. I was totally engrossed in the sensation of heaven. I didn't know I would be back until Jesus informed me it wasn't my time. Has your experience affected your perspective of your daily chores or work? Absolutely. I now view all I do as a chance to bring some heaven to earth. Whether it's my employment, my contacts with others, or even little chores, I strive to approach them with the love and delight I knew in heaven. It has also made me more deliberate about how I spend my time and money in ways with eternal relevance. Did you find any notion of how earthly prayers find their way into heaven? Although I did not observe particular prayers being answered, I felt as though heaven and earth are always communicating. I realized that prayer is a real and strong link between us and heaven, and that God is closely aware of and active in the life of people on earth. Did you come to understand the part angels play? Indeed, I sensed the reason angels in paradise were meant to be there. They appeared to be continuously in worship and in serving God's will. Always in subservation to God's authority, I realized that they play a more important part in our life than we usually recognize. How has your experience affected your contacts with non-believers? Sharing my faith has more urgency for me now. But it also makes me more patient and loving of those who disagree. Now that everyone's path is different, and that God's love reaches everyone regardless of their place in their religious development, I understand better. Always honoring others' free will, I attempt to offer my experience in a way that encourages rather than pushes. Did your understanding of God's sovereignty and free will change? Though this is a profound theological issue, I did have some insight. I felt that with our earthly intellect, God's sovereignty and human free choice cooperate in a way that is difficult for us to completely understand. Though he lets us make actual decisions based on his love, even if those decisions might damage us or others, I realize that he is always striving to bring good out of any circumstance. Did your understanding of the nature of evil or the existence of suffering in the world change? Although I didn't find any evil in paradise, by contrast, I developed a better awareness of its character. The truth of wickedness and suffering on earth was even more evident in the flawless goodness and love I encountered. I realize that evil is really the distortion of God's perfect creation, that absence of His kindness. It strengthened for me the need of bringing God's light into this planet's gloom. Has your near-death encounter changed your attitude on death or dying? It has totally eliminated any death anxiety. Death now seems to me as a passing to something far more beautiful than we could possibly dream, not as an end. That doesn't mean I'm rushing to die. I want to fulfill God's will since I think He has one for me here. But when my time comes, I will greet it with delight, knowing what lies ahead. From your experience, what lesson should individuals pick to carry forward? People should be aware that God loves them far more than they could possibly dream. Heaven is real. It is more lovely and ideal than anything we could possibly understand. Our decisions and behavior on earth have great lifetime importance. Most significantly, though, I want people to realize that our path toward eternity is prepared by a connection with Jesus. Accepting. His love and pardon is more important than striving perfection or adhering to guidelines. We appreciate you telling us such a remarkable narrative. Before we call to close, is there anything more you would want to add? Though my experience was deep and transforming, the most crucial thing is not my tale, rather God's story of love for mankind. By telling what happened to me, I hope people would be inspired to pursue God for themselves and live with an everlasting viewpoint. I appreciate you let me relate my experience. Your narrative is absolutely amazing and offers us many of ideas about life, death, and what follows. Thank you.